Next question comes from a downtown resident. It is, what is your strategy for taking full advantage of Memphis's position as the largest black majority city in the nation? And I'll start with Van Turner. So I attended school at Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia. And it's sometimes referred to as the black Mecca because of all the businesses, all of the education, all the things that Atlanta has to offer. Memphis has that potential. We have it right here. Maynard Jackson made sure that there was minority participation of businesses, and that turned Atlanta around. We need to do the same here. We need to make sure that there's an equitable and diverse spend of city dollars to build black businesses. Black businesses build a black middle class. A, bat, a black middle class would lift Memphis up. It would lift the entire city up. If we want to address all of the ills in Memphis, we have to address poverty. And if we do so, we'll see the new Memphis. We'll see Memphis become a Mecca. And this would be a Memphis that we all would love and respect. And whether you're in, in the Cooper Young area or you're in East Memphis or you're in South or North Memphis, you will benefit from this. Paul Young? Memphis was recently named the, the largest black city in this country. And my goal is to ensure that that's seen as a positive. We know that oftentimes people correlate that to a negative, but that should be a positive. There is no other city in this country that has the same culture and the vibe and the energy that we have in Memphis. That comes because of the black people that have populated this area for so long. And we should be leaning into it as a strength. Diversity is our superpower. It's the thing that no one can do better than us. We want to make sure that we're building black wealth in our community. We want to work with our business sector to make sure that it's not just city contracts where we're building black wealth, but we're also building wealth through the business sector as a whole, because we know that only 1% of business is being done with black businesses in this city right now. We can change that. We want to lean into our creative culture. It's our brand. It's the thing that, that makes Memphis special. And Black people in our city is what have created that, and we want to invest in it. So the entertainment and music industry. Floyd Bonner. Yes, thank you. I'm excited about the, about the growth of the African American community in in our city. Uh, so many times, uh, uh, I see my wife as a small business owner that's struggling and trying to make trying to make her business grow. So there's opportunities for entrepreneurs, especially when we look at our young African American kids that are in school that really has a heart or has a, an opportunity to really want to be entrepreneurs. But we must share that vision. We must share that goal. We must get them involved. We must train them, teach them in workforce development and grow the African American community into the middle class and upper middle class. So there are so many opportunities here. I think we can be a, a, an example of the South. Thank you. Karen Camp. Thank you. I'm excited about what's possible with Blue Oval City. When we first learned about this, I reached out to the BBA, the MMBC, and the minority suppliers to say, hey, we need to come together, black people in Memphis who have the knowledge, the skills, the expertise, the capital, everything we need to move us forward, but we've got to collaborate. We have got to build alliances because some of our businesses are so small that they can't bid on some of these contracts. But if we came together, we can. And as the city mayor, I have the power to contract, to sign that contract, to make sure that these businesses are getting access to some of these contracts. Secondly, we need to be thinking about, and this is what I'm thinking about as the next mayor, there are a lot of black uh, financial institutions and businesses that need to be managing some of, have access to managing some of these retirement funds. That's the way to build wealth for families far beyond where we are now. There is so much more we can do, and I pledge to do it. Okay. J.W. Gibson. Thank you. So as an African-American born in Dixie Homes and raised in South Memphis, and just so happened to operate today three diverse businesses, three successful businesses that I started all from scratch, with no experience in any of those industries. I believe I truly have an opportunity to be somewhat of a model to African Americans who are coming up behind me, to show that they have the opportunity to dream, hope, and create that type of future for themselves. Memphis will, will survive and thrive on the majority of the population. 
unlike today, where the majority of the population is living in poverty. We have an opportunity to change the story of minority businesses, minority community, and how we care for those individuals to give them that sense of hope, to give them those opportunities to do business with city government, and then be able to translate that business into corporate world, as I did. And lastly, Michelle McKissick. As the daughter of an entrepreneur, one of five kids, my dad uh, raised all of us as a financial advisor, accountant, and so I know that lifestyle of what it's like to want to have more for your family. And here in Memphis, with 40% of our children living in poverty, being the largest majority black city now in the country, we have to address that poverty. We have to provide families with a pathway of how they can get out of poverty and to support their families. That being providing more certifications for students while they're still in high school so they can get out of school and go on to make a, a wonderful, meaningful wage. Another idea I have is to provide more support for um, our young adults. They often say there's just not enough to do here in Memphis, so we need to tap into what they're interested in in terms of entertainment. And then also, uh, a, a lot of young adults now, uh, they don't want to work a traditional job. They call themselves multi-hyphenate entrepreneurs. And so we need to support that, working with our two black business associations and how can we work with those associations to help businesses.